with a yo ho ho, it's Taylor the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play in Azuma 11 3 Team Ogre Attacks. Football fans all over the globe, allow me to welcome you to this the first Group A match of the inaugural FFI Finals. Today, England's Queen's Knights face as an Azuma national of Japan. I'll be your host, Maxter Lund. Joining me in the commentary box will be former European League superstar Levin Murdoch. Great to have you here with us, Levin. It's great to be here, Maxter. That's the guy from Bomb Blast. So, Levin, who do you think's in with the better chance today? Well, Maxter, the Queen's Knights are one of the biggest names in European football. They've got an impeccable pedigree. And let's not forget, they've also got a one-man powerhouse in striker Edgar Partinus, who simply has to be seen to be believed. At the other end of the field, you've got a Japanese side who've certainly made their mark on Asian football in recent months. But I just can't help wondering how much of a dent they'll be able to make in the armour of this formidable English side. England! England! Come on, you knights! Rah! Meat pie sausage roll! Come on, England! Give us a goal! Ah, who cares? Just pretend they're cheering for us instead. Come on, you lot. This is our first step on the road to becoming world number one. Let's win this. World number one? I rather think not. Do you truly understand what it means to be the best in the world? Huh? Verily, thou speakest as though those to become champions is a quest for thee, and thee alone. But you forget you carry with you the hopes, dreams of an entire nation. To betray the responsibility this confers upon you is to betray your duty as representatives of your homeland. We, the Queen's Knights, do battle with the fierce pride of having been chosen and with the full understanding of what this entails. You, who see only the challenge before you and not its true significance, will never defeat us. Uh, but... Come, knights, to arms, for the glory of Albion, that London Smash tournament that I can't go to, that I really want to. Yeah, we've got to carry the hopes for all of the Japanese people who are not on the field with us. That's the message they're trying to put across. The, the crowd is cheering for us. We've got to give them what they want. Nice little tradition you can do before each match in the FFI. You can actually have a wander around the pitch and talk to the various people. We can talk to, obviously, our own side. And then, more importantly, you can go and have a natter with the other team. That being the British side in this occasion. Oh, Japan, cows those truly concentrate, encumbered so with head rags, goggles, and other such gewgaws. Verily, it would seem that I have touched a nerve. I am British myself, and I do not ever hear the word gewgaws in day-to-day -day life. But nonetheless, I really enjoy the way this team speak. It's just so stereotypical, and yet this game was localised by English people, so they clearly know what they were saying, as evidenced by the inclusion of the England football chant. That's very British to go, England, England, na na, etc. So they're just, the translators are taking the mickey out of themselves, and that's good to see. Hey Axel, I did it, I came up with a new move. Now I've got to rival. I've got something to rival Fireball Storm. Watch this space. Oh, I'll be watching, all right. I wasn't talking to you, Big Ears. All right. <laughs> that wasn't needed, was it? But Austin has got Gladius Arch. Two right, we're ready, and these guys are going to watch as well. Perfect. We'll get a good view from here. Y yes, Chief. Hey, Chief. You won't, you know who, get mad with you for eating all those sweets? 
Oh, don't be such a goody-goody. It's just a few leftovers from the opening ceremony. You wouldn't go to a hotel and not take the shampoo, would you? Forza, Captain Evans, show us what you can really do. And here we go! My stylus has been out for a long time. Here we are at Hydra Stadium to take on the English squad. And I will show you my formation because I've prepared it in advance with delicate preparations in mind. For you see, Austin Hobbs has just gotten a new move in the Gladius Arch, so I want to have him on goal. We've also got our brand new strikers, Kevin and Samford, so I want to have them up front. And, um... Yeah, Bob Job proved to be quite a hit with the commenters, so I figured, well, why not? He can join the permanent lineup <laughs> because I'm kind of sick of using the wall with Jack anyway. He hasn't got any new moves yet, so we'll give him some time off. But all of these players are very British indeed, <laughs> referencing things like the Grand National, which is our horse racing tradition. He's a butler. Don't know what heavy metal has to do with us, but, you know, he wants to be a secret agent. <laughs> We've got somebody whose name is a direct reference to David Beckham there, who loves royal appointment stuff. Does everything here really tingles my British senses? And it's, it's, I really like this guy in particular, Philip Owen. He's just a nice design, and I put him on my team in the post-game of Team Ogre Attacks. But you definitely cannot recruit English people for the Japanese squad while you're playing the game. So let's pass to Kevin, then. Of course we don't. This happens in every match in the game. You do not get to start matches with possession, and they're going to use their special tactic, the Absolute Knights, to take it from us. They've changed their formation the enemy must not be allowed to retain possession he must be bombarded until he relinquishes the ball this is the power the might bestowed upon us by the greatest tactic of them all absolute knights look out he's going to shoot From a very long distance as well, Excalibur is indeed a long shoot, and we're able to stop it anyway, though. Yeah, he saved it. Hmm, so you really mean to play, Japan? I am pleased to see it. We haven't even started yet. Here we come. And it is quite surprising that we managed to stop Excalibur, because in the anime, Excalibur's portrayed quite differently in that it's a long shot which I doubt it works this way in the game, but in the anime it's a move which is designed to be stronger the further away you use it. Now Kevin's got a new move Dragon Slayer which is just as strong as Wyvern Blizzard weirdly, but we don't have Sean Frost so we can't use that move. Dragon Slayer is what we want to use to score our first goal in the FFI Finals. Am I right? That's not even an original move, that's just taken from the Secret Service. We are scoring with Kevin Dragonfly, boys and girls! I did that on purpose, actually, because um, that Kevin Dragonfly is indeed the very first goal scorer in this story, if you're following the anime with Dragon Slayer itself. He gets a goal in this match, which is nice to see. You're a very good jumper, young man. Fair enough, I'm not going to be catching you up there. But yeah, so in the actual match, as portrayed by the storytellers, the goal scorers are uh, Axel Blaze and Austin together using uh, Tiger Storm. Kevin gets in there first with Dragon Slayer, and we also get to see Austin's new move, Gladius Arch. So no doubt... I will be putting the time in to showcase that for now. But meanwhile, Edgar Partinus has used up all of his TP of doing Ultra Moon as a dribbling move, so he won't get to use Excalibur anymore, which is quite a relief. What are you doing? <laughs> Where did you think that was going, lads? He just threw it absolutely nowhere. 
Yeah, Excalibur is a definite threat in this match because it's a long shot, it can score from anywhere, but it certainly won't be doing any scoring now. Stone Prison, that's more like it, we're not going to be getting past that kind of defensive move. I, I don't know how to feel about the fact they, t they see Prison as an English stereotype to base the move upon, uh, but that's, that's what they decided. <laughs> In general, I don't know how to feel about this match because it's the English match. I am from England, so there's many different ways you can feel about playing against England. You can feel, oh great, so we're playing against my country, but we're playing against them. <laughs> Like, this is a match between Japan and England, and I, an English man, have to cheer for the Japanese squad. And in fairness, based on the way English politics have turned out and all that business, maybe I would cheer that way in real football as well. But certainly at the time of my first playthrough, I kind of struggled to get behind the facts I was meant to be playing as Jap Japan against the English team. But I think to help with that, they knew that in Inazuma 11 was going to have a big audience in England. So I kind of feel they intentionally made England a really dislikable team. Not going to waste my TP on any special tactics because the time's running down. They can just have it. Queen's Knights is kind of purely based on one team member. It's just Edgar Partinus, and he's not the most likable fellow. And that's okay, because he's clearly meant to be disliked. He's not... You, if you like him, it's just because he's British or because he looks like Nathan Swift. But, you know, that's fine. English people are not the nicest people in the world, I can say from experience. They're very tight. They want to protect their personal finances and they don't want to help out other countries. But maybe that's a little too political for this channel. I don't want you conceding a single goal in this second half, you hear? Keep possession and keep moving. Understood? You really think we can? Never mind. Can. You will. That's all there is to it. Sharp, Stonewall, I want you two to take control. Me and... <laughs> You're in control now. Think about why you put you on together and make it work. Yes, coach. Mark, you just worry about keeping that goal safe, okay? Yes, sir. Easier said than done, I fear. Partinus is as possessed of an awe-inspiring strike. Can you really stop it, Mark? He doesn't need to stop it. Not if it isn't going in in the first place. Wh what was that? Sorry. Ignore me. I was just thinking out loud. It's just that no matter how powerful a shot is, if it's not headed for the goal, it doesn't matter. All right, the second half is about to begin. Dig deep, everyone. Aye, aye. Yep, I'm just going to take the moment to switch my formation around a little bit. Give me a sec. Yeah, Austin and Kevin don't really have enough TP, so we're going to bring on Samford and Axel. It is not absolute knights alone that you must cower in fear of. We have countless tactical manoeuvres at our command. You have heard, I am sure, that attack is surest form of defence. It is we battle hardest knights that we know the best. They've charged formation again. It looks sort of like a knight's lance. Indeed, fair maiden. This is the offensive tactic we have humbly dubbed Invincible Lance. And while I am here, allow me to introduce the imitable Paladin Strike! Did he call it highly imitable? As if to say it's quite easy to imitate? Because I agree, it's a really bland looking move, it's just kicking the ball. He doesn't need to stop it. Not if it isn't going in in the first place. Could that be it? Yeah, of course. I don't need to stop it. I just need to send it off course. I love that move. 
<laughs> I really like it. We're going to call it the Dimensional Hand, which is a bad name because it doesn't really involve a hand at all. It just it, he presses the floor and a force field comes up. Any ideas on how that where we can stop that flash idiot partners from shooting in the first place? Yes. Then what are we standing around for? This had better be good. Oh, it is. Duel Typhoon! Or, if you want to take a robotic approach, we can call it the Typhoon 2. Or the Typhoon Twins, even better, but I'm, I'm not going to go off on one about that. So they both wrap themselves in Typhoons and stop their opponents from telling which way they're moving. Then I suppose we'll have to call it the Dual Typhoon, won't we? Only two really great strategists like Jude and Caleb working together could come up with a tactic like that. Alright then, you lot, let's win this, shall we? It seems we underestimated you, Inazuma National. But know this, we shall not lose. We shall take the championship for England and for the hopes and dreams of her people. Except we're actually in a really good position to score because we've only got to get past this defender and then we're heading for a shot with Jude. I don't think I've taken any shots with Jude in the in the whole process, but never mind, we shall we shall just go for twin boost. Not the best best move in our arsenal. They might be able to stop it, but England's Queen's Knights are not a team which get any guaranteed goals on you through the process of rigged story. So we're not too bothered. We still managed to score anyway. So we're going for the clean 3-0. Queen's Knights are obviously not the toughest team in the game, given that you face them first, but they're still respectable. Some might be able to say Fire Dragon's a little bit more respectable as a team, but that's just not the way things worked out. But again, you know, if Fire Dragon were here instead of the Queen's Knights, then we wouldn't have been able to explore England and it's it's poor weather and it's nice scenery. We'd just be having a look around Korea. Now Samford, he's a forward, but in the anime they treat him more as a midfielder just because there's so many forwards already and that is reflected in the game by him having Gale Dash, a very, very good dribbling move. And he's got enough TP to go for Emperor Penguin number two anyway. We even get to get Caleb Stonewall involved with that, which is quite fitting. But we're going for it. So yeah, as I say, Queen's Knights, they're not meant to be that likeable, but I think that makes sense for an English team. England never does that well at football. They never do badly at football, but they never reach excellent heights. So they're just better than average, and this is a better than average team to reflect that with a couple of mean people that we need to knock off their perch. Which we're doing quite handily because Edgar Patternus was not able to score against us. And that's all down to Mark and his new move, Dimensional Hand, which I think, honestly, looks grand. It's such a clever idea. Instead of not stopping the ball, you just let it go over the goal. And a, a slightly duff name can be forgiven when it's a completely original idea, which I never would have thought of. <laughs> that was just outside of the penalty box, thankfully. But yeah, mad props for the idea of Dimensional Hand. The disadvantage of using it, it is slightly more effective than Hammer of Fury. But while Hammer of Fury holds the ball in place, so Mark can then pass it on to someone else, the disadvantage of using Dimensional Hand, I will be using a special tactic here, I can only use Trap Dance, but I got away with it. So the disadvantage is that because it goes beyond the goal and you don't actually stop it, the opponent can still use a corner kick if you do Dimensional Hand, but it's still pretty much guaranteed to say to stop the goal from going in the net so that's what's important it's a worthwhile move in my opinion and now we're gonna try and s rank this go for the we don't need fireball screw let's just go fireball storm to try and level it up and make this a 5-0 match to remember take that england good luck against all the other teams which i don't imagine you'll have the best chance against but, you know, <laughs> they tried at least. 
they have a good message. Like, they, they remember that there's a lot of people that wanted to be on the team, but they couldn't make it. Specifically referencing Dave Quagmire and all those people. And they remember that you have to take notice of those people and represent the team on their behalf. A team is more than just the 11 stroke 16 players on the field. It's the whole country supporting you. And that's what England understands. And Japan has learned that message very well. As a result of playing in Azuma, the Queen's Knights of Knights of Queen, if you want to be Japanese about it. So that should be full time. Hit us with the stone prison. And we'll call. We'll blow the final whistle on this. Good games, English bros. Yes, another victory for Inazuma National. It is over. I am most honoured to have competed against you. Any new moves? No, but at least we levelled up Bob Job and Aphrodite. Hopefully we'll get Aphrodite onto the pitch soon. He's still a little bit under-leveled. You fought well in Azuma National. Your thirst for the ultimate prize does you great credit. But this is only one game. Our loss is an inconvenience, nothing more. The group stages are yet in their infancy, after all. We will go on to head our group and best all who face us in the knockout stages. It shall come to pass. England will lift the cup. The Queen's Knights will taste glory at last. You say, at last. But this is the very first FFI, you know. <laughs> You'll be the debut champions. He just had a last minute flirt with our managers before he left. So you did it, eh? Your first step to the top of the world. Huh? That's weird. I thought I heard a voice. Well, I mean, that would make sense. We are in a football stadium. Was that him? <laughs> I'm gonna cry! <laughs> it's a Jordan scene! Congratulations, everyone. That's the first hurdle overcome. And now that I know you're making a fist of it, I have all the more reason to try my hardest. They say that a journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step. Well, we've both made that step now. I will be reborn, you'll see. Your places will be ours, Inazuma National. This I swear. Yeah, I'm not so bothered about you, mate, but Jordan, I miss you, baby. Come back to the team. Next up, Inazuma National take on Argentina. But thanks to Mr. D Skullduggery behind the scenes, we have even more on our plate. See how we handle it in Mr. D's dastardly design. Oh no, it's him! Thank <laughs> you. 